Hi, Jackie Van Rilla here, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about how to heal and reverse hypothyroidism. So this is something that's coming up for a lot of people right now. I just keep hearing it from my clients and those in the community around me. It's also something that I've been dealing with the last couple of years, and I've had some um, amazing progress just in the, probably in the last six months or so with it. So I wanted to share some of the things that I found and then how hypothyroidism shows up on your face and some facial reflexology tips that you can do to reverse it and to help your body to heal. So my goal with facial reflexology is to just have a happier, healthier world because I do feel like we are in a state of chronic stress. Most of us are, and that affects our nervous system. It affects the way our bodies work. And I know that your body is totally capable of healing itself from just about anything when we do the right things and when we remove the toxins and the yuckiness that can cause us to get sick. So let's talk about some of the hypothyroidism symptoms. You might have a few of these already without being diagnosed as hypothyroidism. And a lot of times you won't actually get that diagnosis because your doctors, when they look for it, they're really just looking at the TSH. And a lot of times they don't check the T3 and the T4 and all these different labs that can, can show hypothyroidism. And a lot of times your labs don't show it um, as much as you show the symptoms as well. So your doctor's like, oh no, you're fine. You, you know, it's all in your head or, or those types of things. So if you have the symptoms, you can pretty much assume that your thyroid is not working um, amazingly well, and you can do a lot of these things to help to improve it. So some of the symptoms are fatigue, depression, constipation, dry skin, weight gain, puffy face, if you have a lot of puffiness in your face. In particularly, you'll see your puffiness around in this area right in here and right in here. When you have puffiness in this area, a lot of times the whole face gets puffy because this is a lymphatic drainage passageway. A lot of the fluid from your face drains through here, down through the neck, and into these, um, the terminus area here for your lymphatic system. Hoarseness, joint pain, muscle aches, muscle weakness, um, reg irregular periods, and a lot of times your periods will actually be lighter, or you may have amenorrhea, which means you don't menstruate at all. Thin, brittle hair, a slowed heart rate, sensitivity to the cold. So if you feel just really sensitive to the cold, you feel like you're cold all of the time, that can be a symptom of hypothyroidism, um, impaired memory, and then an enlargement of this area on your neck. So those are a lot of the symptoms that you can get. And that one thing that I noticed for me was there are two things that I started doing um, right around the time that my hypothyroidism started. And that was the number one thing was that I had been gluten-free for well over 10 years. And so I was at a time when I was like, I'm going to try and eat gluten again and see if I can tolerate it. Um, and I thought that I tolerated it fine because some of my symptoms previously, the reason I had stopped eating it was um, digestive, digestive issues. And I really didn't feel those coming on when I started eating it again. But what happened was I got the fatigue and the weight gain and those things came on slowly. So I didn't realize it was happening right away. The other thing that I started doing was eating out at restaurants more and restaurants are more likely to serve seed oils. Seed oils are things like vegetable oils, canola oils, margarine, um, all these like really processed oils. So you really want to stick with natural oils, things like olive oil, avocado oil, um, butter, ghee, tallow, things that are naturally oily. Obviously vegetables aren't naturally oily and vegetable oil is not a natural product. It's a very highly processed one, one that's processed with high heat and can cause a lot of um, rancid stuff in your body. So what it actually does is it um, emulates cholesterol, but it doesn't work in the same way that cholesterol does. So cholesterol is actually a very healthy food for you to eat, despite what you've probably heard over the last 50 years or whatever. But your body does need cholesterol. It is the building blocks of vitamins A, D, E, and K. It's um, the building blocks of all of your hormones, all of your sex hormones in particular, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, um, and those types of things. And it's also the beginning of bile, which helps your body to break down fats and use fats as energy. So if you don't have a decent amount of cholesterol, it can actually show up as weight gain. So the two things that I highly, highly recommend that you do with your diet are cut out all grains, sugars, and processed oils, um, or processed foods, and then this cut out all seed oils. So seed oils are going to be the 
vegetable oil, cottonseed oil, rapeseed oil, which is canola oil, safflower, sunflower, all of those. So even though they sound healthy because it's vegetable or sunflower or whatever, they are just very highly processed and they're not um, oils that occur in their natural form. So those are the dietary advice. That's the dietary advice that I have for you. And let's get to doing some facial reflexology. Sorry, I don't like to talk quite so much, but let me pull up my face map here for you. So we are going to start with our kidney points. So kidneys control the flow of energy through our body. Place your fingers on the corners of your mouth, all the way up to your hairline, and then come down about maybe a centimeter or so. You'll feel an area in which your fingertips kind of fit in. And those are the areas that you want to work. So the right side of the kidneys is going to have to do with the origin of fire. So this is going to be a heating point. This is going to heat you up if you feel like you're constantly cold, if you're chilled to the bone, if you can't get warm, particularly if you're feeling this um, every day throughout the day. So the right side will warm you up. The left side's gonna have to do with flow and energy and keeping things moving within your body. So when we get hypothyroidism, everything in your body slows down, your metabolism, your digestion, your blood flow, all of those things. And so we want to keep those things moving and sped up. Okay, next point we're going to work is right in the center of the forehead. And this is a great spot for improving your memory. One of the um, things that people get a lot with hypothyroidism is brain fog. And that's because your blood flow, your oxygenation, all those things aren't moving rapidly through your body. So your brain's like taking a few seconds delay behind like what you're thinking. So you might be thinking, so you're like, what is that person's name? And you can't remember. It's because you don't have enough blood flow to your brain. Next point we're gonna work is the pineal gland. And this is a point that helps you to become more intuitive, more in connection with your body and with your spirituality. The pineal gland is a gland that responds to toxic chemicals like fluoride. And fluoride is a chemical that can replace iodine on the T3 and the T4 molecule. So T3 and T4 are your um, thyroid hormones, or at least two of them. And what they are is they're a tyrosine. They're, two or th they're three or four tyrosines connected to an iodine. Fluoride and iodine are in the same um, periodic chart, in the same line on there. And so fluoride can replace iodine. And when that happens, your T4 and T3 don't work nearly as well within your body because it's not what your body recognizes. So you also want to make sure that you are not using fluoridated toothpaste, that um, you have some way of getting fluoride out of your water. If your city water uses fluoride and then don't use mouthwashes or things like that with fluoride in it either because that can disrupt your hormones. You want your body to have your hormones in the most natural state possible. And so that is to use iodine. Now iodine is found in things like um, seafood, so seaweed, if you like to eat sushi or things like that, a lot of that nori, the kelp and things like that have iodine in it. But also egg yolks are really, really high in iodine because chickens want to provide as much nutrients to their babies and so they have the iodine in the egg yolk. Um, and particularly if you're getting eggs from um, a farmer who free ranges them or feeds them organically fed foods, a lot of times they will actually supplement with kelp as well. And so they have a nice high um, iodine concentrate. So those are some things I would recommend doing. You can also take an iodine supplement, something like Lugol's iodine or something like that to help increase your iodine if you are really struggling with hypothyroidism. Next point we're gonna do is this area right between the brows. This is a point for the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. So these are the glands that release thyroid hormone. And they also regulate all of the endocrine functions of your body, including your thyroid. Additionally, the pituitary gland releases human growth hormone. And you're probably thinking, I don't want human growth hormone because I don't want to grow. But human growth hormone is actually a hormone that allows you to keep your muscle strength and your bone strength and all of these things as you age. So in children, it's about helping them grow, but as adults, it's about keeping our muscle strength and our metabolism and bone density. So this is a really important place to work. 
Next, we're going to work right on the side of the nose right in here. And this is excellent for working the throat and the thyroid. And you might notice that you have some puffiness in this area. Or if you notice that you have a dark colored area right in here, that is a sign that you have um, blood sugar dysregulation issues. So again, like I said, one of the main things you want to do to heal and reverse your hypothyroidism is to decrease and actually even eliminate, if you can, all processed sugars, um, grains, and processed foods. And I bet you'll find that this area right in here, if it's dark and discolored, also will eventually become normal color. It will take a bit, so don't expect it to happen overnight. Next point is going to be on your nose. You're going to come down your nose to the point where it starts to soften up. This is a point for enhancing your blood. Your hair is considered an extension of your blood. And so this point helps to uh, make sure your blood is nutrient rich, full of oxygen, and full of vitamins and minerals. Now, many of us worry that we don't, we're mineral or vitamin deficient or things like that. And so we take a lot of supplements. Your body is actually really, really good at recycling what you need. So if your body is working well, it will recycle what it needs. And you very rarely, rarely need to take um, any supplements. The one supplement I would recommend with hypothyroidism is iodine if you feel like you're not getting enough. But other than that, I don't like to take any supplements. I like my body to get what it needs from the food that I eat. And when you're not eating processed foods, you're going to get a lot more of that nutrition. So this is a great point for your hair. One of the things that I've noticed since I have changed my diet and taken out um, so many of the processed foods and the breads and the grains is that my hair has actually gotten a lot darker and a lot of the grayish hair that I got is starting to fade away. And so you may notice some of these changes with your hair as well. Okay, next area we're going to work is on the left hand side of the face. We're going to work the stomach and the spleen. So the stomach is going to be in line with the bottom of the nose directly across the smile line right in here. And the stomach is really, really important for the thyroid because it produces stomach acid. Its job is to break down proteins into individual amino acids. And these individual amino acids can be served as building blocks for your um, hormones and neurotransmitters and things like that. So if the stomach is not producing enough stomach acid, it won't break down the proteins and you're more likely to experience food allergies and things like that. So you want a nice, strong stomach that's breaking down proteins very well. Other point is the spleen in line with the flare of the nose, directly under the iris of the eye, working right in this area. The spleen is about controlling your digestive process. So if you're finding that you're having constipation, weight gain, particularly weight gain in the middle in your abdomen, the spleen is an excellent place to work on a regular basis to keep things moving and flowing. Now we're going to work the other side, the right hand side, we're going to work the liver and the gallbladder. So hypothyroidism is really a liver deficiency. Your liver is not able to do its job because it doesn't have the nutrients or the things it needs to do that. So the liver is going to be located on the, um, under the nose and just bring your magic wand right under the iris of the eye. Come in here and you're working slightly upwards. Now the liver's primary job is to provide energy for the body. So notice that when you have hypothyroidism, one of the main symptoms is low energy and fatigue. So the liver is not able to do its job. The liver can get out of sorts when you are eating a lot of processed foods or grains because all of those things turn into sugar. And the liver actually would prefer to operate and to provide energy through fat metabolism. So if you're eating a lot of sugar, a lot of grains, a lot of processed food, the liver can get fatty and sludgy and slow. Okay, now as you move over just a little bit, you get the gallbladder. The gallbladder stores bile, and bile's job is as a detergent to break down fats and to help the body to get those um, fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K, plus cholesterol. And those things are really important for, the, for making your hormones, making bile, making, um, getting those vitamins out and keeping you nice and healthy. Vitamin A has a lot to do with your eyes, how well you can see. Vitamin D has a lot to do with how you feel in your immune system. A lack of vitamin D can lead to depression. 
which is another sign of hypothyroidism. Vitamin E is great for the skin and K is amazing for blood clotting. All right, next point we're gonna work is this point right in here and you can go up and down and this stimulates the immune system and uh, the large intestine. So this is great for constipation. But one of the things that people get with hypothyroidism is called Hashimoto's. And that is when the immune system is attacking the body or attacking the thyroid. What we want is a nice, healthy immune system that recognizes what parts of you are you and what parts of you aren't. So we want an immune system that's going to attack, you know, not your thyroid and not things that are already a part of your body, but to attack um, foreign invaders and things like that. So we want to calm the immune system and help it to recognize what it actually should be working against and what it should stay away from. Okay, then we're gonna work this point right here where the upper lip attaches to the nose. So right there, this is a spot you don't wanna work if you are pregnant, but if you are really suffering from hypothyroidism, it's unlikely that you're, un that you're able to get pregnant because it will affect your fertility. So if you're pregnant, skip this point but otherwise this one is completely safe this activates your sympathetic nervous system so this is going to encourage more movement and flow within your body more energy release and so this is a great one you can work anytime you're feeling really low energy give yourself a little extra boost okay and then we're going to work this point here in the outer part of the eye this is an area for the pericardium, and this is going to give a little extra oomph to all the points we've already worked. Provides circulation. One of the things that you'll notice with hypothyroidism is dry skin, and that's just because we're not, our blood's not flowing well enough to provide good circulation to your entire body. So work in this area. Right in there. And then we're gonna work the primary point for the thyroid. It's gonna be right here in front of the ear. Now, if you have hypothyroid issues, this area is probably very tense. It might even be painful. You might feel the need to cough when you work this area. So just notice what's going on. This is an area where lymph gets stuck and stagnant. Remember that hypothyroidism is about things getting stuck, things moving slowly in your body. So work this gently. If it hurts to work it, just work it gently and then come back and work it on a regular basis because this is gonna help to improve flow, help your body to detoxify, improve that lymphatic drainage, help with any puffiness that you're experiencing on your face. And as always, we're gonna work by working around the ear. So coming down that front side of the ear, back and around the um, back side of the ear or you can just go up and down that front side if you have hearing aids in or big earrings or things like that but working around the rear ears stimulates the kidneys and the kidneys are all about the flow of energy within your body we want everything to flow nicely and evenly additionally I'm going to show you a couple of hand exercises you can do for hypothyroidism Make sure that you are following me on Instagram at Jackie Van Ruler because I'm going to start posting these face maps on Instagram instead of sending them out, out in emails just because emails can be time consuming for me. This one you will get in an email, but in the future I'm going to start posting them on Instagram instead. So one thing you can do with hypothyroidism is take your fingers and make a V and then just come in here and really focus on warming up this area so about 20 to 30 times up and down and then pull on your ears this just gives you a little energy rush and particularly as you're working on healing make sure that you're doing these different exercises focus on your energy and all of that all right thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video yeah